everybody, it's Denise Joyle. Welcome to my studio in Pondsville, Maryland. Um, I'm also known as Killjoy uh, on Instagram. I'm the adjunct professor of ceramics and some art history classes at Wilson College. I have my MFA from Hood College and today I hope to show you how to... Hi Scott. Today I hope to show you how to make um, both some rolling whiskey cups and some uh, toroidal forms. So a toroid is a uh, like a hollow donut mm -hmm. um, and it's been uh, used as a theoretical shape for the universe. So um, let me talk to you a little bit about what these things look like first um, and then we'll uh, we'll go ahead and uh, get started. So hi Stacy, hi Glenn. This is this is a teeny tiny little teapot. I've made bigger ones, um, but I had this one laying around and I thought you guys would think it was really cute. Um, so this is just a little hollow donut shape that had a spout and a little lid cut out and added to it. I have it taped down there so I don't accidentally drop it. Um, and the toroid was just kind of smashed a little bit so it would sit flat um, like that. Uh, and then uh, another thing that I like to do with them too is I will use them for a vase. So the hole kind of goes straight through um, the center so you can see the stem of your uh, vase there and uh, you have your flowers to enjoy in those. Um, this is also a little toroid here on the bottom. I do have a little bit of water in there so I'm going to try to be careful not to spill it on myself. Uh, that I've actually I've just thrown those as a little ring um, like you would throw a spout. Just cut off a little ring and, and use that. Um, as for the rolling whiskey cups or whiskey rollers that I call them. I've got a couple different sizes that I make. Some of them are about a pound or so and they're a little bit larger uh, for the bigger hand. And then I make a smaller version, um, the you know 10 to 12 ounce size. So just depending on the person, they may decide one is more comfortable than the other. Um, the, the parlor trick with these is that uh, you weight the outside a little bit more so that they roll, um, kind of like a weeble. And uh, there's my little guy too. There we go. Uh, but the goal, of course, being that you don't want to put it down. Uh, I do make two different types of stands for these. One is, is a hand-built stand. I actually kind of carve these out by hand. Um, and so the, the roller can sit there on it and kind of be elevated. Hi, Andrea. And then uh, I do also make what I call a, a lazy man's refill. Uh, and this is just kind of almost like a little inkwell, but it's enough to hold a shot. So um, you could sit them on that, have your drink, and then have your extra without ever getting up if you're, you know, a little bit lazy. So um, I may or may not be a little bit lazy. You'll have to find out later. So let me put these down, and we'll go ahead and get started. I don't want to accidentally start knocking over fired work. Okay, so um, what I'll do first, I'll go ahead and stick a bat on here. And I've uh, pre-wedged some uh, varying size pieces of clay, primarily about 12 ounces here for these uh, demo whiskey rollers. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Stacy. Hey, Jennifer. Glad you guys could join. So um, I will go ahead and I will slap this down on the wheel. Um, I really, I tell my students that I like to have everything really kind of, you know, nice and round and centered before I even start. If your ball of clay is kind of all over the place, you might be all over the place too. So this way it's really, um, you know, easy to center. I'm still a fan of the, the natural sponges, so I'll keep one of these in my right hand. And I'll go ahead and center this ball of clay. It actually got really cold last night. My studio is uh, an outbuilding that um, it was uh, it's an Amish built shed that I've converted. I've uh, had it delivered and we added the um, bead board and everything in here. I have some baseboard heating units but overnight I don't keep it very uh, very warm so my clay is a little bit cold. Maybe a little stiff here. Thanks Corey. Hi Linda. Hi Nancy. So, um, once I've centered my clay, what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and open it up. Now, one of my professors, um, Ben Culbertson, he always talked about how when you're making bowls um, to 
unthinkable the whole way. So when you are um, trying to make a bowl, like don't don't start off making a cylinder and then try to turn it into a bowl. So there's really there's two shapes in ceramics. There's cylinders and then there's a continuous curve. So a bowl is always a continuous curve. Thanks, Tara. Um, so hi, Winona. We are. Um, going to make a continuous curve for the bottom of the cup, but then it's going to be more cylindrical as the walls go up. So we'll, uh, I'll show you that here. <coughs> Pardon me. Okay, so um, typically with my students, if they're going to make a bowl, I just have them kind of stick their thumb in and kind of push down and out. Um, this kind of makes a well. So you're not like kind of going straight down like, uh, you know, you're going to open up into more of a, a bowl-like shape right away. So there, you, you have a bowl, you could be done if you wanted to be, it'd be a little thick, but um, you know, we're starting that base off in that bowl-like shape. And then what I'll do is I'll compress the clay. I do leave a little bit of extra clay on the bottom, maybe more so than I normally would. Um, so, you know, a quarter inch would be my usual, and maybe I'm between a quarter and a half here, because I really, ultimately, I'm gonna trim that curve uh, into the bottom of the piece. So we'll go back and forth a few times, kind of compress this and give us our, our bowl-like shape. Once I'm pretty happy with the, the thickness and the evenness, I'll actually start coating this in just a little bit, like a little bit of a volcano, like you would if you were making a cylinder. I'll recenter my rim. Um, and then I'm going to push in on the outside. From the inside, my hand's going to come in and up. And I'm gonna come out a little bit first, and then I'm gonna come straight up, and I'm actually coming back a little bit now. I'm kind of pushing from the outside inward a little bit and working against uh, the centrifugal force that's trying to make my hand wanna go out more. And then I'll center that there. We have a tiny bit of air in there. We'll see how that goes. We can always get rid of that. All right, and so then I'm gonna do the same thing again, because I have some more clay. My finger on the inside is going to go across the bottom and out, and I'm actually going to have it push out a little bit above my finger that's pushing in. See that? This is really where that um, the weight of that clay is going to allow this roller to roll. So I'm going to keep a little bit of extra thickness right there on that outer edge. Don't worry if it feels like it's wobbling on you a little bit up above. You can fix that once you get here. The important thing is that this part is stable. And so now, take a little bit of my clay here and just get my wall the way that I want it there. And so nobody wants to drink from a cup that has a really sharp edge. Um, so you don't want your rim to be too thin, but you also don't want it to be flat because that's not comfortable either. So I actually do a little bit of a bevel out from the inside out toward you. Um, if your cup does the opposite, you end up with a, a glass that spills, um, and it's kind of a dribble glass. It kind of runs down the side of your face, so you really uh, don't want that. I'm actually not left-handed. I just couldn't remember what Tim said about switching this, so this is my right hand. Um, sorry about that, guys, uh, and I'm usually fairly technically mm -hmm. savvy, so um, I don't know if it's this thing, but we'll find out. Um, hi, Chloe. Thanks for joining. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and make this rim. I'm just beveling it out a little bit so we don't have the dribble glasses that Chloe and I talk about in class. There we go. Um, and two, I like my surfaces really smooth. I do some carving on some of my work. So I'll take this little wooden rim. This is uh, by Troy Bunghart, by the way. Um, if you're not familiar with his uh, tools, I have a number of them and they're fantastic. Uh, so I'm going to push out from the inside a little bit and just kind of smooth out that surface there. There we go. Beautiful. And sometimes I even get really fussy and I'll come in with one of these red mud tool ribs and really just soften that surface up so that when I go to uh, do my carving, I don't really have to worry about it being having any throwing rings or any inclination of that. This edge here, I want to make sure it's not sharp. 
Um, so I'll just kind of soften it with my finger a little bit. And then my last step is to take my chamois and uh, make sure that I soften my rim. So I've got a chamois uh, it's stapled to a cork. Uh, it's just a little strip. You can buy a big piece of it at a car dealership. Hi, Megan. And uh, I'll just use that to soften that edge there. There we go. So that's that's pretty good. Um, I will take my sharpened stick and take away a little bit of clay here so that it's easier for me to trim this later. But don't be afraid to leave a little support clay under this. I, I've had my students always ask me, um, you know, I, if I want something to be rounded, um, you know, why would I, uh, you know, why can't I make it round on the wheel right away? And, and the truth is that nobody makes something fully round on the wheel right away. It needs some support. So with bowls too, you know, I encourage my students, leave a little extra clay. You can always trim it away. It's better than having something that's really sagging, so. Um, I'll go ahead and wire this off and set it aside. All right, and we'll make another, and then we'll move on to our toroids. All right. I like these little square bats. They take up less space on the shelf. You can get more of them on a shelf, so they're fun. All right, so slap the clay down, do a little slap centering. Make sure you have a nice round ball there to work from. And we'll go ahead and center our clay. You notice I don't do a lot of uh, a lot of coning. I might take some clay on the outside here if it feels like it's a little off and kind of bring it up a little bit. But I feel like, especially because I use a, a fairly uh, porcelanous body, this is um, the this is the Laguna um, B mix wood, and so it's about half porcelain, half white stoneware, I guess. And um, you know, it tends to twist if you really like cone up high and come down and then you're like working against that twist the whole time. So I'd rather kind of take the clay, you know, that's bumping around up from the outside to this edge and I'll just work it into the middle if it's misbehaving. Get a little bit of extra slip there and then I can just come across, push that down and come back out. My clay will be nice and centered, and I can avoid that that twisting issue. So, all right. So, if you missed the first one, we'll go again. Um, we're trying to make a more of a bowl-like shape at the bottom. Hi, Larry. Hi, Renee. Um, and so, we're going to make the base more like a bowl, and then we're going to bring it up like a cylinder and cone it in a little bit. So, I'll just go ahead and open this into like a little bowl shape. Just kind of pushing down on my thumb to get this to be a bowl shape from the very beginning. I can move my hand from the center out. So now I'm just going to compress down into this bowl. So I'll go back and forth a few times. Compression can really help you avoid those cracked bottoms and not leaving water in the bottom is another thing. You'll notice I throw fairly dry. Um, not completely dry, but I don't like to throw super wet. The clay gets soggy. Um, it's porous and it absorbs moisture, so uh, you get actually less time and less tries with it if you make it really super soggy. Alright, so now that I've got it out like this, I'm actually going to cup under and bring it in a little bit. It's a little more like a volcano shape there. And this would be how I would encourage you to make a cylinder because the centrifugal force is going to work against you the further you go up. If you know, you're know you going up and it's already pointing out, it's going to keep coming out. But if you're going up and coming in, 
then you'll be straight at the end. And my rollers do, they, they tip in just a little bit because once they're on their side, you don't want the liquid to pour out. Um, so I'll, uh, hey Paul, so I'll uh, do that so that they don't, uh, you know, weebles wobble, but they don't spill all over the place. That would be bad. So I'm gonna push in here. And I'm gonna take some of our clay. check from the top down too if you have uneven thickness you can kind of fix that um, on the way down and then my inside finger is going to take some clay and I'm going to push out toward this outside finger just a little bit there you go see that Get just a little moisture in here there and so I'm holding this angle with this finger and I've got this extra weight right here. And I'm gonna leave a little bit of extra clay on this outer edge, even when I trim. And that's gonna allow the roller to really roll because the weight of the wall is gonna be on the outside. So, playing with physics. So now I'm gonna clean this up so it actually looks like a straight wall. So we'll take our, take our little wooden rib, kind of clean up the surface there. there. Now I'm going to bevel my rim outward just a little bit so that it's comfortable for use. You know, if you find all this monkeying around leaves you a little bit uneven, you can always uh, take your needle tool and do a little cutoff. So I feel like I've got just this tiny little bit of unevenness here, so I'll just straighten it up. It's not cheating if you can do it. So, um, Just tip out a little bit. Notice I'm still keeping the rim a little bit soft. I don't want it to be sharp. Um, sharp edges tend to chip and nobody wants to drink from a chipped cup. I started with uh, 12 ounces, Rhea. Hi Wanda. Oh thanks Patty. I'm gonna trim them here in a little bit. Um, so I use my chamois here soften that edge just a little bit. I'll take my finger too uh, and soften here. I don't want this to be sharp. And you can, if you wanna really add a lot of detail later to uh, some of your design, you could use something like this soft uh, Cheryl tool rib to, to really polish up that surface. Um, and then look at this, this, this is a, uh, it's a gorgeous uh, trim tool here, a sharpened stick by Troy Bungart. Look at the, the burl in that, I really I love it. Uh, and I'll use that to take away this little bit of excess clay down here so that when I go to trim it, it'll be easier to do. And I'll just wire this bad boy off. Extra clay there on my trim tool. I'm going to take that with me. There. Oop. Always double check if you left a little moisture in your interior. Don't want it. No soggy bottoms. Hey Harley, good to see you. Oh, the ribs, Maria, are um, so Troy Bunghart made these uh, wooden ribs and then uh, mud tools uh, by Michael Sherrill make these soft uh, red ribs. He's got yellow ones too that are a little bit stiffer depending on your application. All right, so we'll take those guys off and we're, we're gonna move on to the toroid, which is the, the hollow donut. Thanks, Harley, doing good, I hope you are too. 
I hold the cup close to the camera. Sure. So you can see there's a good bit of support clay still under there. There we go. But we can always take that away through the magic of trimming. All right. So I'm gonna use the same amount of clay now just to make a small toroid, more like something that I would make for this, uh, this little vase, if you didn't see this in the beginning. So this is also about 12 ounces. Oh, they all are. So I've got four different ribs by Troy Bungart sitting on my uh, sitting on my tool bench. I've got this uh, what does he call that one? A surfboard. I've got the cute little wooden one, which I love. Hey, Tammy. Uh, I've got this long guy, and then then my sharpened stick that I use for uh, undercutting everything. It's like potato chips. You can't eat just one. Can't have just one. All right, so um, 12 ounces of clay. Uh, we're gonna make a little toroid. Um, we could make a vase out of this. We could make a teapot. Um, I've used them just as the rim for a, a platter. So I'd make a, a slab base and then use that as the rim. You can even stretch them out so they're a little bit more um, ovaled if you wanted to. So. All these little square bats, um, well, they used to be by somebody else, but then um, Speedball bought them, I believe. So now I think they're all Speedball, the bats. All right, so I'm gonna center our little ball of clay here. Now, for the toroid, I'll actually do a slightly lower slightly lower centered piece. So uh, depending on the, the type of piece I'm making, if I'm making something vertical, my initial centered round pieces. So uh, with the toroid, you're going to go all the way to the wheel head on in the center. So I'll just take two fingers, kind of work against the spin a little bit, and just go straight, straight down to the wheel head. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring this out a little bit. So depending on how big you want the center to be, you may decide to, you know, move that. So I'll take both hands. I'm a big fan of like steadying myself with multiple uh, appendages when possible. And so I'm just going to take these fingers and I'll pull them toward the palm of my hand, keeping the palm of my hand on this bat so that I can open that out. So that's probably pretty good for now. I'll make a little guy. And then I'll flatten this, the top of this a little bit more so that when I go to open it, I have what I need. Actually, I can make it a little bit wider, make it a little bit flatter. I'll open it just a tiny bit more. There we go. Okay, so right now we just have kind of a flattened round disc with no bottom in it. I like a quick disconnect there, Stacy. I hopefully you're still seeing me. <laughs> Marcia, that's fantastic. We are breaking the internets. All right, somebody give me some feedback. Let me know you still have me. Ah, I see it. All right, um, so now that we're open, um, yay! Yeah, it, it seemed less than 30 seconds to me, Stacy. so hopefully we're good. Yay, thanks guys, thanks guys. All right, so we've got the, the toroid open down to the wheel head. We're, we've kind of, just like you uh, center your rim, you do that little pinch and push, just bigger here to have this whole thing centered. And then I'm gonna open it just like you would, um, 
Thanks. Hey, Margaret. Um, so I'm gonna open this just like you would, like if you're putting a lid on a pot, I'm just gonna go right down the middle of this. So I'm gonna take my finger, get a little bit of moisture in there since the interior of the clay hasn't seen any yet. And I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna leave about a quarter inch of clay at the bottom, just like I would if I were throwing a cylinder or anything else. So right there. So now I've got this, these two areas that I'm gonna raise up and then bring together. So this interior piece, I'll push in on the inside a little bit. So this is kind of almost opposite how you normally throw. And then I'm going to lift this wall up. I'll bring it in just a little bit and I'm gonna bevel it toward on the bottom side toward me. And so just like when you're, um, when you're making a slab cylinder, you're gonna bevel two edges so that you can put something together. Um, you know, that's, that's what I'm doing here. And so I'm going to do the same on the outside now. I'm gonna bring this wall up. So push it in on the outside. And this is just like you're throwing any other object, except you're careful not to mess up that interior wall that's near your inside hand. I'm gonna bring this up and in a little bit. There we go. And this outside wall, I'm actually gonna bevel this edge a little bit so that when they come together, they're gonna be able to meet up well. Um, I don't want like a super area of too much thickness because um, that could cause a problem too. So this is actually a little bit higher than, than this wall here and that's going to be okay. I might bring this up just a little bit more, but that'll be all right because it's going to, they're going to come together. So now here's the tricky part. Now I got to get these guys together. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull this toward me with this hand. So three fingers pulling toward me and this one I'm kind of using my thumb and my other hand to push inward just a little bit. And so, and I want to keep it not wet wet but moist. So I'm just pulling toward, kind of pushing inward a little bit. going to come under this a little bit and push in on both kind of raise that up a little bit and make sure I really have a tight connection if you've ever thrown you know a hollow uh, form and closed it off same idea So I have the ability to change the shape a little bit if I want to um, because it's balloon-like. So here's the thing. You can use your metal rib and kind of get a curve and that can be really good. However, um, one of the... <laughs> Thanks, Marsha. Uh, it's practice. Everything's practice. You can do it too. You just need to try it and practice. So. Um, if you use your metal rib to help with this curve, it's great, except if you get in this inside, you got a really good chance of like jabbing this in here. I know this from all the failed tries that I've done. Um, and so I'm gonna go ahead and use this metal rib here and kind of clean up this curve on the outside. I'm gonna be really careful not to do so much on the inside with that. I can take a soft rib or any rib and do the inside too. I like these guys because they're small and I can get in there. But I, again, it'll dig in when the clay is coming toward you if you have this at the wrong angle. So you just gotta be really careful um, if you're trying to get that excess slip off. You can always clean these up with the trimming process too. So it's really kind of up to you how you wanna do it but nobody wants to, to puncture it. So you can make really tiny ones of these 
and use them as like a piece for a lid. Um, uh oh, uh oh, Paul, I don't know. <laughs> I think you might have to tell me. Um, so, the uh, I've done a few different things with these and the surface of them. I've made them like super smooth, like this, so you can see like that. Um, I've also like sometimes it's really kind of cool to see um, to see throwing rings on it or make it look thrown. So you can kind of you know take your just the tiny bit of nails that you have and kind of add a little bit of uh, interest that way, get that spiral sort of look. So that can be really fun too. Oh, <laughs> inside jokes, I love it. Um, so, um, yeah, so I have some rounded trays that I had made with these as, as the rim on those as well. Um, so really it's up to you. I've done them really smooth and I've uh, stamped the surface of them. There's a lot that you can do. I've made them into teapots. I've made them into vases. I've used them as rims for things. You could make a, a bowl and just make a toroidal rim. So you could just make this hollow donut rim and it could be a really nice strong rim for, uh, for like a mixing bowl. Um, I've used them as like little knobs. So depending on the you know, the size and, and what you desire, you can do a whole lot. Um, you can stretch them after you pull them off and make them oval. They don't have to stay round. Um, so it's a really fun uh, technique and you can uh, uh, impress your friends uh, with, your, with your parlor tricks. So with the stick, I will take the clay both from the outside there and the inside here so that when I go to trim the other side of this, I don't have this like crazy yucky thing going on. Um, there. There we go. All right. So there are those. Now, through the, uh, through the magic of television, do, 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 there may be some pieces I made yesterday that are dry enough to trim. So, oh, thanks so much, Kevin. My, Husband and I put up all the beadboard ourselves, so it, it took a while. I was happy to have it done. Yeah, so um, like I said, through the, the magic of television, the pieces that I made yesterday are dry enough to trim, so I'm gonna bring those over next. Um, just like the uh, initial demo, we'll start with the uh, cups, and then we'll go to the toroid. So give me one second, actually, to get up and grab those. They're nearby. Uh, long time no see. All right. All right. So I'm going to, I'm always careful if I cut something off yesterday and it's still sitting on my bat to give it another cut before I take it off. I always dry my hands, get all the, the goo away before I take something off like that. All right. There we go. We'll just sit this guy right on here. Now, um, of course, you got to recenter your piece. So, thanks, Chloe. So, I'm going to, you can see here, it's definitely not even close to being on center. So I'm really worried about from here to here. A lot of people are trying to center the rim of their pot, but you really need to try and center the bottom part because that's what's going to look right. So even if your thing is off a little bit, you can get there. Alright. So that's looking pretty good. You can use a fingernail or a tool um, to mark the bottom if you I think you trimmed it fairly evenly when you took it off the wheel. That can give you an indication if it needs to move in one direction or another. Looks pretty good to me. So, let's deal a little bit of clay here. I'll put this down. So, I always do... You know, east, west, and north, south. 
And I'm pressing down, not in, because I don't want to collapse the, the rim of my pot. I like to trim mm. things a little bit soft, so. Oh no, this one doesn't get a hole. This is, uh, this is the cup. So the, the toroid already had the, the hole thrown in. So hopefully I really don't want to make a hole in this one. Yeah, so the toroid was thrown with the hole already in it. The cup was not. So, um, so we're gonna take this cup and we're gonna trim it. I have to tell you that um, I really plan to try one of these mud tool do-all trim tools at Ensika and decide if I wanted to get one for myself. And because I wasn't at Ensika, and thank you, Julie, my mom made it. Um, I just, I ordered one online and this is my little didn't go to Ensika treat. Um, now you should all buy yourselves I didn't go to Ensika treats. Um, go get a cup from somebody you admire. Uh, I think it's really important to support everybody who didn't get to go. Um, we all want to have, uh, you know, something from each other. So don't forget to do that. Um, so I'm going to try it out. I tried it once last night. It seemed to work great. If I totally screw this up, I'm not used to using it. So now you know. Um, so let's see. So I've got this outside edge here. So I really kind of want to get rid of that first. So, and you can see this is nice and soft. Might be slightly softer than I would trim in an ideal situation, but I've got this piece here, so I'm gonna show it to you. So, there we go. So now I'm gonna turn it the other way. It's got this little hook-like tool, it's pretty cool. excess clay. So I'm just moving toward the center. I'm trying to make it fairly rounded. Um, this clay is really soft. So, but ultimately I'm going to want to slowly make sure that that top part, that this doesn't end up staying flat. That's the goal because we really, we want it to roll and it's not going to roll if this is flat. In fact, it has to be a little bit of an angle from there out. The nice thing is we can take a rib, it's a little bit stiffer, and help us achieve that. So let's go here. Work our way into the top. Yeah, I'm excited about it, Renee. Hopefully it's, uh, hopefully it becomes my new favorite thing. It seemed like it would. I just think I need to be just ever so slightly more stiff. typically just use the sound to figure out what I've got going on and how far I can push it. So if it's soft like this, the nice thing is I can take, I can take a nice big rib and I can kind of give it a little bit of the angle that I want. So you see there. 
hair kind of working. Hey, Tom. So we're, we're pretty close. You know, um, I might go one more pass and kind of really just push down here. I don't want like a crazy point on here, but if I can get that to just have a little bit, a little bit of an angle down so that that center point is really just a little hair taller than the rest. assured that that is gonna roll. As they get a little bit drier, um, and you can, I'm gonna take off excess clay here, but if you've slopped over a little bit, you can clean up that edge too. Um, and I just kind of keep an eye on them. When they get a little bit more leather hard, I'll put them uh, on a board and make sure I can roll them a little bit. You can manipulate your clay a little bit that way. Um, avoid pushing down on this center point you have something that just kind of sits in the middle and, and flops around. Um, but you can take it on a board and you can kind of manually give it a little roll uh, to make sure that uh, your point uh, of contact is where it is. And you know, I'll be honest, it's not, it's not a perfect science. Some of my rollers only lay one way. Um, sometimes there's just a little bit more uh, weight to the outer edge of one side versus another for whatever reason. Uh, when I go to decorate them, I check on that uh, and I do my decoration accordingly. So if I know something's sitting a certain way and I want the decoration to be facing you when it's tilted a little bit, um, then I will do that accordingly. So that's, that's a tip. Work with your, work with what you have, make the best of it. Um, a little goo down there. I'll we'll clean that up. And there. So, again, really clean hands before you pick up your newly trimmed pot. And carefully pull my clay away before I lift it up. Here, yep. clean, clean, clean. There. All right. Lift that up. There we go. So there you are, gang. There's the bottom. See how that kind of has that little bit of a point there? That's really what you're looking for. And you can see how this bevels in a little bit. So if the cup is sitting like this, your liquid's not going to go oozing out. Hey Ray, nice to see you. All right, um, so let's grab our toroid and hope it's not quite as soft as this guy was. He's pretty fragile. Hang on, let me put him down. I have two, so I'm gonna take the one that's a little less gooey. This one I did some some finger markings too, and the other one I did not. So, um, you know, the interesting thing is is that I can come back on the other side after I trim it and do the same thing and make it look like I did that all along. Um, anytime you make some marks in the clay when it's super wet, you might have some of these like little hairy pieces there kind of hanging off. Don't worry about those. Um, later you can kind of clean those up, but if you try to clean them up when the clay's super wet, you just kind of end up with a mess, so. The little holders. Oh, so I've got two different little holders, Patty. One is um, a stand that is uh, made, I make it all in one piece, it's a little square and I kind of carve it away. And then the other one um, is the Lazy Man's Refill and it's like a little inkwell. 
Uh, if we have enough time after I trim this, I was going to make one of those just for fun. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we're still on schedule. I think we are. So let me go ahead and take this guy off here. And I wire him. Let's go. Let's put him a wire through. All right. I'll lift him up. I'm going to set him down. Sometimes I'll trim these guys on a piece of foam on the bat, but you know, unlike other pieces, you can't really push down on the middle to hold it in place, so it has its challenges. So you can see here, like recentering this is a little bit challenging too. So I can see I gotta go this way a little bit. Let's see where we are now. Right that seems pretty good. And uh Put some soft clay down to hold it in place. If I were trimming a whole bunch of these, you know, another thought would be maybe to uh, either on my wheel head or on a bat, uh, put down a pad of clay uh, and do them on that. Uh, that might be a little more secure, uh, but we're kind of switching back and forth between things here, so. There we go. All right. So again, pushing down, not in, because you don't want to crush your piece. Um, and so we'll get this guy going here. So my outside edge, you can see I've got that extra thickness of clay. That's exactly how I want trimming to work, right? Nice big ribbons like that. That is perfect. And then this inside here, do the same thing. So I'm just kind of trimming the curve into the bottom side of the toroid. So the top side, you know, I was able to throw it rounded, but the bottom side was a little bit flat. And so I left enough excess clay there to be able to trim this side round too. And if you're really lucky, nobody will know which side is which eventually. So, and if I want this one to look like the um, the other side, I had taken my fingers and I had just kind of done that little bit of, uh, you know, from the inside out and the outside in, giving it a little bit more texture and tooth. That can just be kind of fun to play with that a little bit, make it really feel like, hey, I, I threw those rings into there even though I really just to be careful that that what was initially the flat spot on there that you left yourself enough room and it doesn't get too thin um, so so there there's our trimmed toroid now if I wanted to um, you know I could use uh, either a toroid that I threw or I could just you know make a little make a little coil a quick little toroid to, to sit it on if I wanted to make that vase like I did. This is really crude and for viewing purposes only. I'll spend more time on this otherwise, but this is a throwing demo, not a hand building demo. So, you know, you could just make your little, your little guy for it to sit on, you know, score, slip and attach and have it sit on there like that. Um, the hole, so what I'll do is um, I'll do the hole punch through the top two layers um, and then I wait and I take a, um, a, a long, thin stick of some type, usually like a barbecue skewer, um, and I'll go straight through to here and punch through with the barbecue skewer, and then I know where to make my hole and make it larger. If you don't do that, you really risk either um, squishing your um, toroid or not getting the hole where you want it so that you can run the stem straight through. Uh, again, for folks that are just joining, this was the example, the, the little toroid base uh, with the stem going through. Oop. 
that's why you score, slip, and attach. Um, so, you know, the other thing that you can do with this, um, if you didn't want to make a base for it, you can actually flatten the base a little bit. This is how I made those, those teapots. So I'd flatten that guy out. Um, and then I would add my spouts. I, I would cut out uh, an area for the lid. Um, you cut it on a bevel so that it'll fit back onto the piece beveling outward um, so that that'll stay on top. Um, and then you can add your little finial or whatever you wanted to uh, for a lid. But that's, that's how those were made. And then if I were making a, a platter or something like that, I could actually have a slab um, that I would stretch these out a little bit and attach them to. You can even throw them a little bit. Um, I don't know if you've ever done this with a with a slab, but you can do it with a toroid as well. You can kind of do this little this little bit of a, a stretch by throwing something, so you can stretch them out a little more. They're pretty durable, believe it or not. Right now they're filled with air. So, um, so yeah, if you wanted to make a you know a round platter, you could do a larger toroid, throw it out like that, and then attach that as the rim of your platter. Make sure. Um, that somewhere there's a hole in your, uh, thanks Susan, make sure there's a hole somewhere in your donut eventually to let the air out so that you don't have any cracking issues if, uh, if you're firing a little bit fast. If you fire slowly, you shouldn't have a problem, but, but it can happen. So nobody wants, nobody wants that problem. Um, so let's see, we were going to make the lazy man's refill because we had a little bit of extra time. So, so there's our, there's our donut kind of squished and there he is all right um so let's go to the lazy man refill i've already got a bat this is my biggest bat for my smallest piece here This was four to six ounces of clay, not a lot. And we're just gonna make our little, little inkwell guy. So we'll get this guy going here. Now this is a cylinder, so unlike our uh, our initial whiskey roller, which was a bowl in the bottom, we actually have a flat bottom here. Um, so we're going to open this. Now actually I open with multiple fingers depending on how wide I want my piece open. Pushing down and slightly against the spin in the bottom right quadrant of the pot, so I open it. So when you can support yourself or use more than one finger to do things, do that. So firing the whiskey rollers. So because they roll, um, I'll either put them on one wad on their side or I'll put two wads on a corner and one on another so it t sits on the corner. Um, and that's probably the best way. I, I wouldn't soda fire, so that works out really well. I'm, I've oxidation fired them as well, and I just put them on wads. Another option would be not to glaze your rim um, and fire them on the rim. You're welcome. All right, so here we've got this piece open. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this out a little bit. So I'm just opening, I'm just pulling the clay out toward my hand here um, until I have a, a nice flat bottom. Really compress the bottom well. It's about a quarter inch thick in the bottom there. You know how you want this to be do I want you know a fairly thick rim my the one thing I do with this rim a little bit is I do tilt it in ever so slightly so see how when it goes in like that it can support that cup like shape I think that's kind of important um, for the uh, for the support you can make this thicker or thinner down here a lot of times I'll facet these I'll leave them a little bit extra thick because I just like the the look of faceting um, because I fire in with soda or wood or both, 
Um, when I facet something and I leave those ridges, some soda or some ash can kind of get trapped in there and give me some interesting effects. Um, so I like the, the texture on the rollers. I tend not to, to do my Mishima decoration on those the way that I do uh, on, on these little uh, Lazy Man refills like I would on the roller. Um, it might just be too much and also you know, I spent a lot of time on that decoration on those other pieces so I really wouldn't want to uh, to take more time away from from the main focus of, of the piece but here I'll just clean this up tilt it in a little bit um, and then you know I might this might be a little thick for me I might take a little bit of this away Still have a couple minutes. Are there any questions? Thanks, Don. Appreciate it. You can play with the shape a little bit. Like I said, I'd tilt that in a little for your... Uh... You can decide to if you want to Thanks, Cammie. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Um, so um, I'm going to, if there's any other more questions, I've got another minute or two, and then uh, I'll go ahead and uh, post this to the site. So if anybody wants to come back and watch it, they can. Oh, yeah, Corey, I, I like them rolling, but, you know, honestly, when you put them on a shelf and you have kids and cats, um, either you're turning them upside down or you're putting them on something. So I just give them a little bit, uh, you know, extra support, so. So, yeah, um, I'll fire with soda or wood, um, and I'll do a, a, a good bit of uh, adjusting to make sure that the firing works well. But uh, I appreciate everybody um, and all the comments. Yeah, Ruby, I have a, a gas-fired soda kiln, and then I also fire uh, in a couple of uh, community firings each year. Tim Sherman uh, does not live too far from me. He's got a couple of great wood firing kilns, and so I, I am part of his crew on some of his firings. So thanks, everybody. Thanks, Stacy. Thanks, Jocelyn. Appreciate all your time. Have a great night, guys. I'll be sure to post this, and uh, if you missed anything, it'll be on the Clay Buddy site as soon as it loads. I don't put much of a foot on this. I just do a little undercut. Thanks for asking, because I didn't do the little undercut for you. So, thanks, Marsha. Appreciate your time, too. There we go. There's that little undercut. So. Thanks, everybody. I'm going to cut that off. Wipe my hands and say good night. Take care. Thanks. Hey, Heather. Bye, Margaret. Thanks, Andy. Bye, Renee. Bye, Susanna.